In order to use the Elmer function, we have to load either the LME4 package or the Elmer test package. And since I'm interested in getting P, I will load the Elmer test package. I will read in the data. These are the same data that we used in the previous color ANOVA experiment that we did. Looking at the data, we see a third column which we had ignored initially. This is the blocking column, which allows us to group the measurements by each particular cockroach. So we can see that for cockroach A, there's a red value. For cockroach A, there's a green value. And for cockroach A, there's a blue value and so on with each of the red, green and blue values being assigned to a particular block or roach. Now we use the Elmer function to generate our mixed model. And the assumptions here are the same as what we saw with the other two-factor ANOVA. So it would be a good idea for us to check out the residuals, extract them from the model, and then plot a histogram. The histogram looks pretty normally distributed. It, it, I don't see any red flags there. The Shapiro test confirms that. Uh, and it's interesting that when we include the block factor here, the data are much more normally distributed than they were when we did this analysis on the unblocked data and had to do a log transformation. I am not going to check the homogeneity of variances. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is that looking at it graphically is going to be more complicated. We cannot just throw the model into the plot function and get a breakdown. We also cannot carry out Levine's test because as I said earlier, we have to have the complete model including the interaction term in order to use the Levine test function. Since this is just an exercise, we will just skip checking that assumption, but you need to probably look into the details of how to break this apart and look at the variances of the different groups. Um, but again, that's sort of beyond the scope of what we're doing here. The results that we get when we print the ANOVA are slightly different than what we had when we had a two-factor ANOVA with both of the factors being fixed. In the ANOVA output, we only see the fixed effect being assessed in terms of its P. The P is being determined by Satterwaite's method. That's what the Elmer test adds on top of the ELMI4 package is this extra assessment of P. When we do the summary, the summary tells us about the random effects a lot of the variance that we're seeing is due to the difference between the cockroaches. Um, that removes actually a lot of the variance from unexplained things. Uh, and so the p-value that we get when we analyze this is much lower than we would get if we did not include the block effect. It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10. For comparison purposes, when we did not include the block factor, the p-value was 4 times 10 to the minus 6. So it made the difference much more significant with the block effect. In this case, color has such a large effect that it didn't really matter whether we used block or not, because even without the block, it was highly significant. But if you imagine a situation where the differences aren't so great, then removing variability using blocking could cause results that would otherwise not be significant to fall into the significant range.